In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the methods we can use to measure a rate of reaction. So the first sort of question we need to ask ourselves is why might measuring concentration over time be difficult? Well, if, for example, you took a neutralization reaction, so you took sodium hydroxide and you took HCl and you mixed it together, you would create sodium chloride and you create water. But there's no actual appearance or change that's happening here. You basically just see clear solution all throughout. So how do we actually measure the concentrations? Um, and what kind of observable changes can we measure directly during a chemical reaction? So there are some really good ones. Mass, volume, color, and conductivity are four that we're gonna take a look at and these are all really great. Um, note that these are going to have different units to moles per decimeter cube per second, but they're really good proxies and we can actually do calculations to get to moles per decimeter cube per second with most of them. So it does give us good information about the rates of those chemical reactions. So the first method we can use is a change in mass. So if we take this example here where we take uh, calcium carbonate, so limestone, and we react it with an acid, we're going to form calcium chloride, we're going to form water, and then we're going to form carbon dioxide gas. So if we use the law of conservation of mass, we know that over time when this reaction is happening, because we're creating a gas, the mass is going to decrease over time. So we can measure the loss of mass um, in grams over time. And so that's gonna start out high and then it's going to decrease down uh, somewhere like that. Um, so we can then find a rate of grams per second, but then we can use some information so we can use information uh, to get to moles and then we can also use information about our total reaction volume um, to basically end up getting to moles per decimeter cube per second. So there's a way to get there but this is a really good um, way to measure the rate of a reaction just looking at a change in mass. The second way is looking at a change in volume. So this is really great if you're producing a gas or, a, yeah, if you're producing a gas in a chemical reaction. So um, pretty much anytime you take a metal and you react it with an acid, you're gonna create a salt, but then you're also gonna create hydrogen gas. So in this scenario, we're measuring the volume of gas being produced maybe in milliliters, maybe in liters, it depends what you're doing. Pretty typically, it's probably gonna be milliliters. And since this is a product, we're gonna get a graph that starts at zero, increases rapidly, and then eventually plateaus out. Now, the nice thing here, you're gonna end up with some value of liters per second for your rate, but you can use gas laws and then you can also use your volume to get to concentration. So there's a nice easy way to get to that rate in the units that you need it to as well. The third method involves a change in color. So if you have a reaction that involves either the appearance or the disappearance of a color, you can monitor that with a piece of equipment called a spectrophotometer. Um, spectrophotometer. And this will give you a unit of measurement of absorbance. So basically, the higher the absorbance, the more color there is. So you would have absorbance on this uh, graph here. And in terms of this reaction here, we're getting the loss of uh, the iodine. So the iodine is brown in color, or reddish kind of brown in color. And then when it creates HI, we start to see this disappearance of color over time. So it would start with a pretty high absorbance and then come down and plateau out over time. So again, this is another great method for you if you have a change in color in your chemical reaction. And finally, the last method is a change in conductivity. So this is great if you have a difference in the total charge between your reactants and your products. So in this reaction here, 
Our reactants are all neutral, but our products, we have two negative bromines and two uh, H pluses. So we're cre even though it's a neutral sort of overall charge, we are creating ions here. And so the appearance of ions will increase the conductivity. And so we can measure the conductivity uh, versus time. And this is going to start out down here. It's going to increase quickly and then plateau out. Again, we can get a rate of reaction from here then using the conductivity per unit of time and measure the rate of this particular reaction. So those are four great methods for measuring the rate of a reaction. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.